Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will look at some of the advanced uh, interview questions that you can expect as part of the EC2 service in AWS. Now, EC2 service is one of the very commonly used service that we have in AWS and uh, you can definitely expect uh, many questions from this particular uh, uh, service. So in this session, we look at some of the advanced questions that we have. Once again, before I start off with the session, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. So let's get started with this. The first question I have is what is EC2 auto scaling and how does it work? So auto scaling can be used when you want to automate the scaling up and scaling down of your instances. So with this service, we can ensure we always have the right number of instances, right? And we can use this to scale our EC2 instances so we can automate uh, increasing or decreasing of the instances based on certain uh, threshold. So we will, with this, we will be defining a scaling policy like uh, target scaling or uh, step scaling or simply uh, simple scaling and then based on these policies auto scaling will adjust the number of ec2 instances for us now because of this um, the auto scaling feature will help us to uh, maintain the performance and also it is very cost efficient for example let's say you want to uh, increase these instances when the cpu utilization is high or it goes above a certain threshold then i can make use of uh, auto scaling to add more instances to handle the uh, increased load so basically auto scaling can be used whenever you want to uh, uh, automate the scaling up and scaling down of your instances based on certain threshold the next question we have is what is an ec2 placement group and what types are available so placement groups can be used when you want to control the placement of your EC2 instances. So, you know, it allows you to control on which hardware the instances will be placed uh, within the availability zone. So under this, we have cluster placement group. So under the cluster placement group, all the instances will be part of a cluster within one single availability zone. And uh, we use this when we want to have low latency or high throughput network performance. Then we have the spread placement group which allows us to spread the instances on uh, distinct hardware and this allows us to avoid any hardware failures or any simultaneous failures of the hardware and then the last one we have is the partition placement group which allows us to um, place our instances into logical partitions and again this um, uh, helps us to avoid any failures of the partitions so we have the cluster placement group spread placement group and the partition placement group the next question we have is how do you troubleshoot an ec2 instance that is not accessible via ssh so for this first thing we will need to do is check our security groups whether we are allowing the ssh traffic which is port 22 whether we are allowing that in the security group so if you are getting a connection timed out error then that, that's definitely a security group problem you will need to fix you need to add a rule to allow that particular traffic then you will need to verify a, if the instance has a public ip address or if the instance is running in the right subnet maybe in the public subnet or in the private subnet uh, we have the uh, proper route table configurations we have the gateway settings so we will need to validate all the vpc components um, then we will need to check if you're using the right key pair to uh, connect to the machine so the key pair that is attached to the instance and the key pair that we are using to do the ssh if you're using the right uh, key pairs uh, we can also check the network acls to see if we are restricting any inbound traffic um, then finally we can validate the instance state in aws console and the system status checks to make sure we are not having an issue with the instance itself from aws side we can validate that the next question we have is what is the difference between spot instances reserved instances and on-demand instances so uh, on-demand instances allows us to pay for the compute capacity by the hour or by the second and there's no commitment under this there's no uh, contract period as such you can launch the instances whenever you want terminate the instances whenever you want you're only going to pay by the hour or the second under the reserved instances uh, you will be getting into a contract and in return of that contract you get in uh, uh, you get significant discounts all right so the contract period would be for one year or three year and then you have the spot instances wherein any spare ec2 instances that no one is using aws uh, uh, gives them uh, uh, with a huge discount but then this there's a risk with this where uh, aws can terminate the instance if the spot price in exceeds the 
bid amount that you have given so there's no guarantee that the instances will be available always uh, but coming to the cost that would be the cheaper when compared to your on-demand instances the next question we have is how can you ensure high availability for application um, running on ec2 instances so for this whenever we're talking about making your application highly available in ec2 instances the first thing we'll need to do is launch the instances across multiple availability zones so we will need to have multiple ec2 instances and these ec2 instances should be spread across multiple availability zones then these instances uh, we'll need to place them behind a load balancer and this load balancer will take care of distributing the traffic across these ec2 instances for us uh, we can also set up auto scaling which will help us to automate the scaling up and scaling down of the instances uh, based on load or based on the uh, threshold that we have defined uh, we can also enable multi az rds to basically you know, make the database highly available or any other replicated databases and this will allow us to avoid any single point of failure and then finally have the database behind route 53 uh, which will act as our DNS to basically you know allow the users to access the application using a URL. So basically, you have the instances um, uh, across multiple availability zones, instances behind a load balancer, and this load balancer behind the Route 53. And then in the back end, we'll also have your auto scaling and multi as configured uh, to make sure the application is highly available. The next question we have is what is EC2 Hibernate and how is it different from stopping an EC2 instance? So uh, EC2 Hibernate helps you to save the instances RAM state and this state will be saved in the EBS root volume and pauses the instance. So whenever we restart the EC2 instance, the in-memory data also gets restored and we can continue working with the application from where we had left. So basically the application data will not be lost uh, you know it would be saved and we can continue from where we had left the uh, stopping the instance on the other hand will not save the ramps um, co content and if we um, you know stop and start the machine we will need to start the application from the scratch you know so basically it boots from the scratch so whatever the data we had on the application the in-memory data will be lost and um, you will need to kind of you know start the application flow once again so that's basically the difference so in the ec2 hibernate it stores the ramps state and you can restore it uh, in the uh, shut stopping an instance the ramps state is not uh, saved when you stop and start the instance you are basically starting from the scratch the next question we have is what is enhanced networking in ec2 and when would you use it so enhanced networking can be used when you want to have higher bandwidth higher packet per second performance and you want to have lower network jitter for this we can make use of your elastic network adapter or intel 82599 vf interface so basically uh, ena um, we can also call it as that so whenever you have you are looking for network performance better network performance we can make use of this so this is used in high performance uh, low latency and um, uh, high throughput workloads such as your uh, big data processing applications or any uh, high performance computing applications we can make use of your enhanced networking where uh, your networking plays a major role in terms of your performance of the application the next question we have is what is elastic fabric uh, adapter and what are its use cases so Elastic Fabric Adapter or EFA, that's a network interface that is available for the EC2 instances and this provides us with low latency and high bandwidth networking capabilities. So this is typically used in applications that requires uh, uh, higher network performance like uh, you want to run parallel computing. For example, your high performance computing applications like machine learning applications or any scientific simulations that you want to run. In that case, we can make use of your EFA in, in, with your EC2 instances. The next question we have is, can you resize an EC2 instance? If so, how? So yes, it is possible to resize your EC2 instance, which is basically changing your instance uh, type. So let's say currently you're running an EC2 instance with 32.micro and you want to change that to t2.medium. So it is possible. So as step one, 
you will need to stop the instance once the instance has been stopped you can go ahead and change the instance type uh, in the actions um, uh, 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 in your ec2 console so after stopping the instance basically you navigate to the actions um, go to instance settings and then change the instance type whatever you want the desired instance type like let's say t2.media and then finally we will restart the instance so that will change the instance type for us now uh, we have to make sure that whatever the instance type we are using um, has the compatibility between the hardware that we are using uh, sometimes what happens is the hardware might be different and the instance type that we're trying to use is not supported and you won't be able to change the instance type but mostly you won't get this error in case you get it then you will have to make sure that uh, this compatibility with the instance type that you are using the next question we have is what are the differences between ebs backed and instance store backed instances so ebs backed volumes that's basically your you know root device which is stored on your ebs volumes and under this your data is persistent so even if you stop the instance or if you terminate the instance the data will not be deleted uh, unless you're deleting it explicitly so by default the data will not be deleted but in the instance store volumes your data is not persistent okay the data is stored on the local instance store and if you stop the instance or if you terminate the instance the data is lost okay so basically in the ebs backed instances your data is persistent and in instance store volumes your data is temporary as your data is available as long as the instance is running if you stop or if you terminate the instance the data is lost the next question we have is how do you attach multiple elastic network interfaces or enis to an ec2 instance and why would you do this so um, you can create um, additional network interfaces by default um, you get the primary network interface but if you want to attach additional network interfaces you can always uh, do that so we can use this for security for traffic isolation or uh, network management so all you have to do is um, uh, create your elastic network interfaces and then you can attach them either from the ec2 console or by running cli commands you can simply attach them to your ec2 instances now any additional uh, network interfaces that you attach that will be your secondary network interfaces now it's useful when you want to separate traffic such as your public web uh, traffic from your internal application traffic or for high availability configurations you can make use of this like you want to attach you want to have uh, multiple ip addresses to an instance like uh, private ips you can make use of your elastic network interfaces for that the next question we have is what are ec2 burstable performance instances and how do they work so uh, burstable performance instances like your t2 uh, t3 instances these provides us with baseline performance and then with an ability to burst or go above this baseline whenever needed and for this we make use of your cpu credit so there's a baseline but if you want to go above that baseline you make use of your burstable performance instances so when the instance stays below the baseline usage it accumulates your cpu credits and then we can utilize these cpu credits whenever you want to go beyond the baseline uh, whenever needed okay so uh, whenever you want to you want to have more performance you can make use of your burstable performance instances the next question we have is how do you monitor and troubleshoot is ec2 instance performance so whenever we talk about monitoring in aws we are talking about the amazon cloud watch service so with ec2 service as well we can monitor it by making use of this cloud watch service so with this we can monitor your metrics like your cpu utilization uh, disk um, uh, input output network traffic status checks all these metrics can be monitored for deeper insights we can uh, install the cloudwatch agent onto the ec2 instances and we can start collecting the system level metrics like you know your memory usage your process information and all those things if it's helpful to you uh, we can also make use of instance logs like you know uh, start pushing the uh, logs to cloudwatch or vpc flow logs to monitor the network level traffic so what traffic is coming in what traffic is going out we can monitor those traffics by making use of your vpc flow logs the next question we have is what happens to the data on ephemeral storage 
if you stop or terminate an EC2 instance. So ephemeral storage is your instance store data. So uh, as I said, with your instance store data, the data is available as long as the uh, instance is running. And if you stop the instance or if you terminate the instance, the data is lost. All right. Uh, your data is persistent as long as the instance is running. So your ephemeral storage is mainly meant for storing temporary data like your cache data or a scratch space. But if you're looking to persist your data, then we can make use of your EBS volumes. The next question we have is how can you encrypt data on an EC2 instance? So when we talk about encryption um, uh, in, in EC2 instances under the EBS volumes, we can enable encryption for them. So we can either make use of the AWS managed keys or we can make use of the customer managed keys. Uh, we can also uh, encrypt the instance store. So we can make use of the application level encryption to uh, encrypt the instance store volumes as it does not support encryption directly. Uh, we can also uh, encrypt the data in transit. So we can make use of your SSL or uh, TLS certificates or VPNs to encrypt the data as it is moving between EC2 instances. Uh, we can also consider storing the data in S3 and then encrypting the data in the S3 buckets by making use of uh, S3 provided keys or KMS or um, SSE hyphen C uh, for encryption purpose. And that brings us to the end of our some of the advanced EC2 interview questions. I hope you found this um, video helpful. If you did, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Uh, give it a thumbs up and share it with anyone who is uh, uh, looking to prepare for their AWS interview. Um, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.